Okay, everyone, today we're going to talk about quadratics or quadratic functions in factored form. Okay, now we know from working with standard form and vertex form that a quadratic can have at most two zeros or two roots or two x-intercepts. Zeros, roots, and x-intercepts all mean the same thing. So quadratic functions can have at most two of them. It can have two, it can have one, or it can have none. Now we can see these zeros very, very easily if our function is in factored form. So before we write it down in anything in general, let's just take a look at an example. So if I had something like this, 6x squared plus 7x minus 3. And I wanted to know where the zeros were. I would probably go ahead and factor that. Now it might take me a few minutes given that that 6x squared has lots of options. So let's see. The good news for something like this is that that 3 at the end is prime. So I know that the only two numbers that are going to multiply to that 3 are going to be 3 and 1. Of course, one of them is going to have to be negative. So let's think. I think that if I, if I choose 6x and x, that might be too big. So maybe I'll do 2x here and 3x here, which is perfect because 3 times 3x gives me 9x. And negative 1 times 2x gives me negative 2x, and 3x plus negative 2x is 7x. That's perfect. Now, if I wanted to find the zeros of this quadratic, or where it crossed the x-axis, I would just set my factored form equal to 0. And I'm looking at the zero product property, which tells me that if two factors are being multiplied together to equal 0, then either one of them could be 0. So I'll have a solution when 2x plus 3 equals 0, and a solution when 3x minus 1 equals 0. So my answers would be negative 3 halves and 1 third, meaning this quadratic is going to cross the x-axis at negative 3 halves and positive 1 third. Now, in general, the way that I would write the factored form of a quadratic would look like this. The a value is important. Remember that that tells us the steepness of my parabola and whether or not it opens up or down. Now, if you're noticing, the way that I wrote this, a times x minus z1 times x minus z2, that's z1 and z2, those are the zeros. Now, if you're noticing, the way that I factored our example doesn't really look like that, right, because the a is not in front. Now, we know that looking at the function in standard form, my a value is really 6, okay? And I would get that from multiplying the 2x here times the 3x here. Now, what we need to think about is how could I rewrite it so that it looks like what I have here down at the bottom? Well, you agree that I could probably take a 2 out of that first factor. So if I did that, it would look like this. Similarly, I could take a 3 out of that second factor, and it would look like this. So if I rewrite it, 2 times 3 is 6, and now I can see even more easily that my zeros are at negative 3 halves and positive one-third. And now this one looks just like the way that I wrote the general form. Now, you don't have to write your factored form like this. You would probably see it more often written the way that we started with. However, in general, this is the formal notation or the formal way of writing a quadratic in factored form. So now let's take a look at us graphing using factors. Let's say that I gave you g of x equals 4x squared minus 1. Okay? Now I want to know where the zeros are. So I'll factor it. Let's see, I'll get 2x plus 1 
times 2x minus 1. We're noticing that that's a difference of two squares. Now that means that if I want to find my zeros, okay, I'm going to set this whole equation equal to zero. And I'm going to take a look at what happens if each factor is equal to zero. So my two solutions, or my two zeros, are negative a half and positive a half. Okay, that means that I have the point negative one half comma zero and one half comma zero. So if I plot those, be a point here, point here. Now what you should understand and notice that a quadratic is symmetrical. So this means that the axis of symmetry, given the fact that it's symmetrical and given that these two zeros obviously have the same y value of zero, that my axis of symmetry has to be halfway between them. Well, what well, it's halfway between negative a half and a half? Zero. So right away, I can see that my axis of symmetry is at zero. So where's my vertex? Well, my vertex is going to be the y value of when x is zero. So this is gonna be kind of obvious. We should have already known that the vertex is gonna be at zero, negative one, given that there's no b value. But if I do g of zero, then I get four times zero minus one. So I get the point zero comma negative one, which is here, okay? If I wanted another pair of points, maybe I'd like to plug in one and negative one, right? Because I know that those are also going to have the same y value. Let's try g of one. We'll get four times one squared minus one, which is gonna give me three. So it's point one, three and negative one, three. Okay, and there's my parabola, graphed in factor form. So hopefully you're seeing the benefits of finding the zeros of a quadratic and being able to plot those in the graph. Good luck, everyone.